In this video, we will present some of the projects carried out within the framework of the Advanced Control on Embedded Systems Laboratory. The projects that you will see have been completed by Master 1 students in Control and Automation Engineering at ICAM. The projects are illustrating the concepts of the teaching units Advanced Control 1 and Advanced Control 2. The supervision was done by my colleague Sebastian van Koenberg and by myself, Frankie de Bruyne. We also want to thank our colleagues Cédric Marchand and Vincent Massard for their contributions in this teaching unit. The goals of the project are to implement algorithms introduced in the teaching units Advanced Control 1 and Advanced Control 2. In practice, well, state feedback control and state estimation are implemented. The EduMIP and the Pololu Balboa mobile robots are used to implement position and speed state feedback control with and without integral action. In addition, each team faces a different challenge and takes up an additional separate team problem. This video will focus on the team related problems. Most teams use a state space speed controller with observation of the wheel speed using a reduced Leuenberger observer. There are seven team related problems. In the first challenge, the robot has to be able to follow your hand. In the second challenge, the robot is to be controlled through voice commands. In the third challenge, the robot has to be able to find its way out of a labyrinth. In the fourth challenge, the robot should automatically drive towards a light source. Challenge five is to make sure that the robot is able to follow a duct tape path on the floor. Challenge six considers a slam robot. Here the goal is to make sure that the robot is able to construct a map of an unknown environment. And finally, the seventh challenge is the self-standing up robot, and that's only for the EduMIP mobile robot. The goal is to make sure that the robot gets to the balancing status by itself. Each team-related problem, except challenge seven, is taken up by two teams. One team using the EduMIP mobile robot, and the other team making use of the Polulu Balboa mobile robot. The first platform that is used is the EduMIP mobile robot. The chassis was designed by Renaissance Robotics. The robot is controlled by a BeagleBone Blueboard, a small Linux-based computer for robotics, integrating inertial measurement units, power regulation and charge of a LiPo battery, edge bridges, and connectors for four DC motors and encoders and so on. The second platform is the programmable balancing robot Balboa 32 U4 by Pololu. The Arduino compatible control board features motor drives, quadrature encoders, a full inertial measurement unit and a reflectance sensor array. This board has the ability to interface with a Raspberry Pi. You can find more information about those two platforms using the following links. So this is the link for the BeagleBone Blue and the EduMIP mobile robot. And this is the link for the balancing robot Balboa 32U4 by Polur. These are the students who have taken up the first six challenges on the Balboa robot. And here are the students who have taken up the same six challenges, but using the EduMIP mobile robot. Remember that the seventh challenge is specialized to the EduMIP mobile robot. It's the standing up challenge. We want to thank all students for their motivation and hard work. To keep this video presentation as short as possible, we will present the 17 challenges, but only on one platform. The first three team challenges will be presented for the Balboa mobile robot, and the next four team challenges will be presented for the 
Edumip mobile robot. We will keep the presentations of the team problem solutions short. We have used in this video the presentations and the videos made by the team members. The first Balboa team has worked on the hand following robot. Remember that the robot needs to follow hand commands. The team members are Quentin Wouters and Abderrahman El Kadouri. The first Balboa team has chosen to work with two infrared ER sensors. In such a sensor there is an ER emitter that emits the infrared light and an ER receiver. And in this receiver basically what you have is a photodiode with a resistance that depends on the amount of ER light that is reflected back. These sensors offer a detection range that ranges from a few centimeters to 30 centimeters depending on the sensitivity settings. Here you can see how these two sensors are connected to the Balboa 32U4 control board. In the following pictures you can see the front and side views of the mobile robot with the mounted infrared sensors. Depending on the hand position, as detected by the infrared sensors, the left and right wheel speeds are adapted. And it's now time for a little demo. And as you can see, the Balboa mobile robot is indeed very reactive to hand commands. The second Balboa team have considered the problem of voice control for the mobile robot. The team members are John van Gansberg and Abdella Sarsari. Team Balboa 2 has used the AMR app, AMR stands for Android Meets Robot, and an HCO5 Bluetooth module to transmit the voice commands from the smartphone to the Balboa mobile robot. More information about the voice control app can be found on Google Play. In this way it was possible to implement several voice commands such as get up, go forward, go backwards, stop and advance at a given speed. Time for a little demo. Get up. Go backward. Stop. Go forward. Stop. Banana pancakes. Move at speed five. Stop. Move at speed 20. Stop. The third Balboa team have to make sure that the mobile robot finds its way out of a labyrinth. The team members are Lamia Samawi and Anthony Delfos. Team Balboa 4 have used three HCSRO4 ultrasonic distance sensors connected to the Balboa control board. As you can see, an ultrasonic high frequency sound is generated and the interval between the sending of the signal and receiving the echo is indicative of the distance. Here you can see the front and side views of the mobile robot with the three ultrasonic sensors. The labyrinth solving problem that is used assumes a constant right priority for the robot movements. Let us now have a look at a demo of the system. In one direction
and now in the other direction. The fourth Edumib team faces the light tracking problem. The robot has to follow a light spot. The team members are Michel Zirenevsky and Safé Boalkma. Team Edumib 4 have used three LDRs. LDR stands for light dependent resistors. So these photoresistors are passive components which increase or decrease resistance as a function of the light intensity on the component's sensitive surface. The three LDR sensors were mounted on a breadboard according to the following electrical scheme. The breadboard was then attached to the Edumip mobile robot. Depending on the light source intensity and position, as detected by the three LDRs, the wheel angular speed and the heading speed set points are adapted. Well, let us now have a look at a demo of the system. As you can see, the Edumip mobile robot is reacting to light commands coming from the side by rotating and two light commands coming from the front by moving forward. A mechanism that adapts to the average light intensity makes sure that the ADMIP mobile robot is able to track a light source in a dark and a bright environment as you can see. Team Edumip 5 has worked on the path following problem. The team members are Joseph Aswat and Alois de Bell. Team Edumip 5 have used three infrared sensors to detect the black duct tape line. The infrared light that is emitted is reflected and captured at the receiving end. The amount of light that is reflected depends of course on the color of the surface. Indeed, dark colors are pretty good at absorbing the infrared light so that very little of the emitted infrared light is captured at the receiver. Here you can see the three infrared sensors mounted in front of the Edumip mobile robot. And this is the electrical scheme showing how the three infrared sensors have been connected to the BeagleBone Blue board. Depending on the status of the three sensors, the wheel speed set point and the heading speed set point are adapted. Well, let us now have a look at the implementation results. Team Edumip 5 has tested their solution on a closed track. You will see that the mobile robot is relatively fast in a straight line, but that it slows down when a turn is detected. The Edumip 6 team faced the challenge of the mapping of an unknown environment. The team members are Soheb El Aoumari and Gauthier de Meuser. For their mapping of the unknown world, team Edumip 6 have used the ultrasonic distance sensor that we have introduced previously for the Balboa 3 labyrinth robot. In this slide you can see how the ultrasonic sensor has been connected to the BeagleBone blue board and how this ultrasonic sensor has been then mounted on the Edumip chassis. 
a Python code is running in parallel with the C balancing code. The role of this Python code is to average the distance measurement over a prescribed number of measurements and to send a signal to the C code in order for the Edumip robot to turn by a certain prescribed angle. The average distance measurements are then made available to MATLAB through an HTTP server for presentation of the data. Well, let us now have a look at the results of Team Edumip 6. As you can see, the robot is performing the distance measurements and doing the averaging. Once this is done, the robot is turning to collect the next distance measurement point. When you look at the PuTTY interface window, you can see that the CRC balance code is running. That's the code that balances the mobile robot. And below that, you can see the Python code running. You can see the raw measurements and also the averaged data point. At the end of the procedure, this is the result that is produced by MATLAB showing the mapping of the environment. And finally, the IDUMIP 7 team faced the challenge of bringing the IDUMIP robot from a horizontal lying down position to a standing up position. The team members are Moshin Boud and Julien Fias. The IDUMIP 7 team have made use of a server motor connected to a rig to lift up the mobile robot. Once the mobile robot is nearly vertical, the balancing algorithm of the robot kicks in. Here you can see how things are mounted. This is the servo motor that is mounted on the back of the IDUMIP. It is connected to the Beagle Bone Blue and connected to the rig that can be used to lift up the IDUMIP mobile robot. The IDUMIP 7 team has gone far beyond the challenge that was imposed on them. They have designed an Android application that they have called EDUSTIC. Using EDUSTIC, it is possible to connect to the IDUMIP mobile robot, to control the servo using a slider and to control the IDUMIP robot using a micro and a virtual joystick. The Android EDUSTIC application was developed using MIT App Inventor, which offers an intuitive way of programming using blocks. Here you can see the EDUSTIC code for the connection to the mobile robot using a UDP connection, the programming of the server position slider, the button micro and the virtual joystick. Using this internet address you can find more information about MIT App Inventor and here you can see the EDUSTIC project opened in the MIT App Inventor environment. Let us now have a look at the very nice results of EDUMIP Team 7. Avance. Stop. Gauche. Stop. Droite. Stop. 
avance. Stop. Again, thank you to all the students for their hard work and for their willingness to share videos, slides to produce this compilation video. We hope that you have enjoyed watching this compilation video. If you want to work on these type of problems, join Team AU, the team of control engineers at ICAM.